Arsene Wenger is one of the most iconic and decorated managers of all time, winning 14 trophies at four different clubs. But for a man who was so talented, I think he should have won more. So today I'm turning back the clock and putting a 34 year old Wenger back at his first club, Nancy. However, back in 1984 when Wenger first took over Nancy, they were a league unside. Today, they're in the third division with its six relegation spots. But this is Arsene Wenger. Surely he's gonna use all of his managerial abilities to avoid relegation. And he does by leaving Nancy to join Espanyol in January. I've probably made him too good for the French third division, which is why he was poached so quickly. Although he's not good enough to keep the job as he was sacked following the club's relegation from La Liga. To make matters worse, Nancy got promoted. So perhaps he should have just stayed put instead. This obviously shook Wenger up a little bit because he didn't get another job until the start of season four. But it was worth the wait because it was PSG who came knocking, which is obviously a free trophy as as he wins league on by six points. We've never seen a manager climb the ranks so quickly. Maybe he'll be able to take PSG to win that elusive Champions League for the first time. Well, the following season, he goes back to back in the league, as well as beating Marseille to the Coupe de France. But he got knocked out of a Champions League early by Arsenal. Oh, the irony, hey? But Arsene Wenger is a determined man and he wants to win that Champions League. Part of what Wenger is best known for is revolutionizing the scouting world and he's clearly done a good job of building a squad here at Paris. It's absolutely insane. This has to be the year they win the Champions League. Well, they can only manage ninth place in the league phase, meaning they'll have to go through an extra knockout round where they beat Galatasaray 6-3 on aggregate. They managed to squeeze past Chelsea in the round of 16 to set up a quarter final against Real Madrid, which they won on penalties. This then set up a semi-final against Arsenal, the team that beat them last season. Surely this time, Wenger gets revenge. They've done it! Wenger has made the Champions League final after beating Arsenal 2-1 on aggregate. So it's Barcelona versus PSG for the Champions League trophy. Who comes out on top? It's PSG on penalties! Annoyingly, the game won't let me watch the highlights. I would have loved to have seen that penalty shootout. Obviously, he also guides them to a third league untitled, but this is now getting all too easy for Wenger, and he wants a brand new challenge. So when France came looking for a new manager after an early exit in the 2028 Euros, Wenger jumped at the chance. But this wasn't going to be easy, as he lost the third fourth playoff in the UEFA Nations League, and despite qualifying for the World Cup, the warm-up games didn't go very well. And in the end, it was an embarrassing loss in the quarterfinals of the World Cup to the USA, who pulled out one of the most clutch performances of all time. But rather than be pushed away, Wenger walked away from the France job and took over RB Leipzig for six months until he was sacked, as Leipzig eventually came eighth in the Bundesliga. Wenger has gone from a Champions League winning manager at PSG to failing with France and being ridiculed at RB Leipzig. His downfall has been almost as quick as his rise. And so at the start of the 31-32 season, Wenger's having to rebuild his career by moving to Rennes, a team that have come second place twice in the last decade, but this season could only manage fifth place, a whole 33 points off off his former club. This was just too embarrassing for Wenger. There's no way he could rebuild his career in the shadow of PSG. So he had to move abroad and he took the AC Milan job, but they finished a long way behind title winning Napoli. Maybe expecting to win the title in your first season at AC Milan is a little bit too much, but the second season, he falls back to third place instead. They also lost the Coppa Italia final 1-0 to Napoli and were humbled by Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarterfinals. Genuinely, I, I think Wenger might have lost his magic touch here. It's just all going downhill. Woo, in Wenger we trust. Unless. The following season, he still only comes second place to Napoli, but manages to beat them in the Coppa Italia final to win his first trophy with AC Milan. Let's just not talk about the Champions League. But some clubs just don't care about the Champions League. And for PSG, winning the Coppa Italia was enough to bring him back for a second stint, winning the Super Cup, Coupe de France, and Ligue 1. Although let's not mention the Champions League again. 
But despite that, Wenger's redemption arc was complete. He was back at PSG and winning trophies. Naturally, he wins the league again the following season, as well as a second Super Cup, but suffers another early exit in the Champions League to Arsenal on penalties. In his third season back at PSG, he obviously wins another Super Cup and another league un, and they bring his trophy haul to 14, the same that he won in real life. So if he wins the Champions League this season, that would be trophy 15 and one more than he's won in reality. The league phase doesn't go that well as they only come in 12th place, but they get a kind draw in the knockout playoff round beating Porto 4-0. In the round of 16, they actually get past Real Madrid fairly easily, winning 3-1 on aggregate, setting up a quarter final against his former club RB Leipzig, which they comfortably win. And the semi-final is against Arsenal. I love how in this version of the universe, Arsenal are his big rival team, as opposed to a team that he manages for a long, long time. But after losing the first leg 1-0, PSG come back to win 2-0 in the second leg to get to another Champions League final. They're taking on another Premier League side in Chelsea. But this time, it doesn't end well as PSG lose it 1-0. The Premier League sides always find a way to beat Wenger. The following season, it was Tottenham in the round of 16, which is really embarrassing. But he did manage to lift his 15th trophy by winning the Coupe de France, and 16th by beating Marseille to the league untitled by a point, before winning a fifth straight league untitled in 2040. I'll be honest, I feel like all of these league untitles that he's winning are a little bit empty, especially because PSG have won all but one of the titles since we started this video. And I, for one, am not going to take Wenger seriously until he moves away and wins a title in a different country. Not that he cares though, as he wins another Super Cup, Coupe de France, and goes on to have an invincible league unseason, which kind of reminds me of someone else from the very distant past. It's actually incredible that this AI Arsene Wenger has had an invincible season like he did in real life. Although PSG is so good, I'm surprised he's not had more, really. But that invincible season actually puts this Arsene Wenger ahead of the real Arsene Wenger in the French Hall of Fame. With that invincible season under his belt, though, it clearly felt like the right time to move on as the following season, he takes the Real Madrid job. Winning the Copa del Rey against Villarreal, but finishing 14 points behind Barcelona in La Liga. Perhaps it's not the fairy tale start he would have wanted at Real Madrid, but the following season, he does lift that La Liga title. So it looks like he doesn't need to be in a Farmers League to win the title. Although every single season, Real Madrid or Barcelona have won the title, so it's not that much better than France, really. I mean, if we're being really harsh, he's just done the bare minimum you're expected to do at PSG and Real Madrid. But overall, Spain does seem pretty weak right now, as Real Madrid get knocked out to the Champions League round of 16, obviously to Arsenal. Udinese, by the way, who beat Manchester United, they got all the way to the final, only to lose it. In the next two seasons, he wins another two La Liga titles, two Copa del Reyes, and a Super Cup for good measure. But in his fifth season at the club, it all starts to go wrong. Real drop to third place in La Liga behind Valencia and lose the Copa del Rey final. But maybe this is all part of a bigger plan that he has for the club. Real Madrid haven't won a Champions League since the 2026 season and have only appeared in one final since. Well, this season they come 11th in the league phase, pitting them against his former club Ren in the knockout playoff round, which they win just. In the round of 16, they win El Clasico to knock Barcelona out of the competition and then turn a 3-2 deficit to a 5-3 win on aggregate against Hertha Berlin. So in the semi-finals, they face Bayern Munich who have won two of the last three Champions Leagues. But Real Madrid managed to beat Bayern Munich to have a chance to win their first Champions League in decades. All they have to do is beat Tottenham Hotspur, which they can't do. You hate to see it and it clearly tips Arsene Wenger over the edge. He becomes obsessed with beating Tottenham, so much so he leaves Real Madrid to join Newcastle United instead. Now, this is a Newcastle team that haven't made the most of their Saudi money, bouncing around mid-table and never finishing in the top four. Well, that was until this season when Arsene Wenger takes them to fourth place in the table, 13 points behind eventual winners Tottenham. But he seems to get Tottenham stuck in his head a little bit too much. 
because the following season Newcastle dropped to 11th place in the Premier League table, not getting any European football and being knocked out to the Champions League quarter-final to of course Tottenham Hotspur. I really feel for Arsene Wenger right now, he is destroying his career to try and destroy Spurs and it's not working. The following season, Newcastle finish one place higher and qualify for the Europa League as Wenger adds another trophy to his cabinet, winning the FA Cup against West Ham. Somehow, this will actually be Wenger's first time competing in the Europa League, so it would be amazing if he could have a 100% win record in the competition. The league phase was an absolute piece of cake, and so was the round of 16. They suffered a scare in the quarterfinals, but were able to flex their muscles against his former club AC Milan in the semis. This sets up an all Premier League final against Sheffield United. Surely Newcastle have the firepower to beat them. Or not, as Newcastle get absolutely FM'd to lose it 1-0. This is now the third European final that Arsene Wenger has lost. At least they improved to 8th place in the league to qualify for the Conference League. The following season there is some steady progress as Newcastle now comes 7th place but of course this year they're in the Conference League and surely this is Newcastle's chance to win some silverware. Well they start off by winning every single game in the league phase which sets them up for a game against Derry City who they destroy. FC Utrecht were no match in the quarterfinals but Roma gave them a run for their money in the semis but Newcastle came out on top taking on Schalke in the final. Another year, another final. Arson, please do not let us down. He doesn't. Newcastle dominate the game to lift the trophy. It's actually Newcastle's fifth Conference League trophy. And after winning that, Wenger clearly felt his time at Newcastle was complete because next season he takes a move to Everton, who, if you remember correctly, actually won the title last season. So surely this is a great chance for Wenger to win a domestic title in his third country. Or come eighth place. What happened? Why did Everton drop off so much? Maybe they sold their best players, but they spent 350 million. Wenger is a fraud, like he's just won Farmers League, that's all he's done. They also suffer a really early exit in the Champions League, losing to obviously Arsenal. By the way, if you're interested, uh, Spurs have ended up winning five of the last seven Champions Leagues. I mean, this team are just unreal. The worst part about it though, is his former club Newcastle actually went up to fourth place in the Premier League table, and the following season he still couldn't beat them as Everton came third to Newcastle second. But hey, at least he managed to beat Tottenham Hotspur in the league. He's managed to achieve something. And he finally managed to beat them in a cup final as they win the League Cup 3-2. Maybe now when Wenger retires, he can be happy he beat Spurs at something. But of course, Everton also qualified for the Europa Conference League. Could he get another trophy here? As he did with Newcastle, he won every single game in the league phase. And as he also did with Newcastle, managed to beat Derry in the round of 16. The quarterfinals were an absolute breeze against Atalanta, and he broke Scottish hearts by beating Aberdeen in the semi-finals, setting up a final against Benfica. Will it be a second conference league for Wenger in three seasons? The answer is of course it is, a 3-0 victory and another trophy. And unlike other managers in the past, Wenger doesn't allow himself to fall from grace. Instead, at the age of 66, retiring from management. He more than doubled his real life trophy count with 32 across his career. But was this more impressive than Sir Alex Ferguson? You can find out with this video on screen right now.